From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction to stop the disease spreading between households. That is why people will only be allowed to leave their home for the following very limited purposes. When the first national lockdown was announced by Boris Johnson back in March, I'd only just completed the purchase of my share of a PA28 at Duxford Airfield. And at the start of the lockdown, when I'd not done any research into coronavirus and didn't know how dangerous it was gonna be, I was genuinely worried for my parents, especially my old man who's 78, got a bit of a gut on him because he loves the beer and loves a big Sunday roast. And without knowing how dangerous this new disease was, it did creep into my mind whether I'd ever be able to take him flying. My old man being a cradle snatcher and my mum being 12 years younger than him meant that I wasn't all that worried about my mum. Although I am worried about her for other reasons. <laughs> She's gonna kill me for ripping that photo off her Facebook. And it wasn't until August, many months later, when the ban on flying general aviation had been lifted and I'd completed my type rating that I could take dad up on his first flight with me on my own as pilot in command of my own PA-28. I'm showing you this flight, not only because it was the first flight with my dad, because also we had radio communication problems up in the air. So a proud day for me and hopefully an interesting video for you. I hope you enjoy it. Cool. Right, ready to go. Airspeed live. T's and P's in the green. 50 knots, 55 knots wants to fly and rotate. I've also learned now that I've flown the beast for quite a lot longer now, I've done a lot more hours in it, oh, I should put more rudder in on takeoff. Into the climb, Dad. Lovely. Yeah, it will be today. So the planned route is to take off from Ducks Food, go over to Newmarket, get a max penetration into Lakenheath and Mildenhall United States Air Force airspace, then make a turn over to Bury St Edmunds before heading back to Newmarket, descending back down to circuit height at four mile final for Ducks Food, hauling recall and landing. Well, that's the plan, and it doesn't work out like that. Just have a look over the end. So whilst we're in the climb, I think it's a good idea that for once I show you what my radio is doing. Because I don't think enough videos about flying show you all the little things you also have to do while you're up and about. It's great to have a lovely look out of the window, but flying and enjoying flying and doing it safely is all about planning. So my radio is appearing up here now. If you look on the left hand side in big yellow writing is 122.080. That is the radio for Duxford information. And because we've taken off from Duxford and we're currently flying very near Duxford, we're gonna stay on that radio frequency for a while. But because I plan to fly over to Lakenheath and Mildenhall, I've done my research and I know that I'm going to need to ring up Lakenheath approach on 128.900 to request a MATS penetration, which is a military air traffic zone penetration. So effectively we're saying, we'd love to come and fly into your airspace, please don't shoot us down. So in a minute, as we leave Duxford's airspace, you'll hear my request to change to Mildenhall's radio frequency in preparation for when we get a bit nearer and actually ask for the MATS penetration. Can't see it, but I have a front. It will do well once I finish climbing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Just gonna level out here. It's the wind farm. Yep. Yeah. Right, I'm just gonna talk to Duxford quickly, just get okay, everything settled first actually, let's do that. Bit of carb heat. Duxford information, request frequency change to 136.500 Lake Mead Approach, Gold Tappy Kilo. 
So much for planning there, obviously you noticed I've got it wrong, but that's why you ask for permission to leave, just so they can make sure you've got the right frequency you're going to. I put in Lake and Heat's approach frequency, which is what we'd usually go to, but on this particular day, they wanted us straight to go over to their radar frequency. So as you can see just now, I'm popping that into the radio, then I'll press the trig button in the middle to swap them over, and then now we'll be on 128.900, listening to Lake and Heath, and you'll notice that their accents change, and the 122.080 of Duxford will be left in the redundant right hand side. We'll have a little bit of a listen to the traffic and then we'll pop in and try and ask for our max penetration. We fly a Rex. Sorry? We'll fly a Rex thing more or less. Yeah, pretty we? much, yeah. Yeah. Rainbow one, Roger. Right, I need to speak to Milton Lake near Croach. Do contact flight of military logo channel 6. And remain clear of Hall Beach. Hmm? Lake and Ethan Roach, Golf, Bravo, Romeo, Pape, Kilo, request match penetration and basic service. Golf, Pape, Kilo, squad 0452. Squawk 0452, Golf, Pape, Kilo. So Lake and Heath have now given us a squawk number, we'll pop that into our transponder and then that number will correspond against the contact on their big radio screen in the tower at Lake and Heath Aerodrome. Once they know that, they're more likely to give us clearances and also keep separation from us and other traffic. Alright, so new market race course is over there, Dad. Can you see any planes? No, I'm looking for him. My dad and his family grew up pretty much on Newmarket Heath. He's lived there since he was born, pretty much. And I spent most of my childhood with my brother there, pretending to be Sean Bean out of Sharp, playing on the Devil's Dyke. So it's a, a funny old way to think that that's how we're going to be looking at it now. Anyway, we waited another minute while the air traffic controllers at Lake and Heath sorted out a few other planes, and then they came back to us. I'll explain what they said in a sec. Golf Papa Q, I have our contact uh, six miles east of Cambridge. Say uh, destination QNH 1022. So what they've told us there is the Q&H, they've also told us that they know where we are, they've got a contact bearing, they know exactly what we're doing. We've now got what's called a traffic service as well, and if they see that anyone's going to be near you, they're going to come up there and tell you all about it. It's a very safe way to fly, especially since I've also got a pilot aware on board, so we know about other traffic contacts. By the way, if you look in the top right hand corner, you might see that there's two small planes to my left hand side. For some reason, they're just stuck there on Sky Demon from when I downloaded the route after the fact. They weren't there throughout the flight. So we're gonna to be told some more radio work now. As we get closer to Mildenhall and Lakenheath, they're gonna swap us over to another controller in the tower, which deals with a lot more local air traffic. And he's gonna give us the radio frequency for that in a second. Then I'll use the radio to put that into the redundant side press the central button, switch them over, and then start talking to Lake and Heath Tower. We're at Menhall Tower frequency 122.55. 122.55, Golf Papa Kilo. Golf Papa Kilo, 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 Golf Wind 330 at 10. Lake and East Tower, Golf of Bravo, Romeo, Padakilo, Sporting 0452 on 1022, 2500 feet over Newmarket. Request match penetration and basic service. Golf Romeo, Bravo, uh, Papakilo, normal power, uh, uh, unable basic service. Uh, where are you looking to operate, sir? Uh, just a pleasure flight over Mildenhall Town for uh, over Lark Road, Golf Padakilo. Golf Papa Kilo, Roger. Traffic in the Milton Hall ATZ is a heavy KC-135, 1,200 would be doing VFR circuit. Roger, we'll keep an eye on traffic. We'll just do one circuit over Milton Hall and then depart to the south. Golf Papa Kilo. Golf Papa Kilo, Roger. Are you going to be maintaining 2,600 the entire time? We'll attempt to. Golf Papa Kilo. Golf Papa Kilo, Roger. And I got traffic 12 o'clock, 5 miles. 
Just in case you haven't been looking in the top right hand corner, you'll see that I made a turn to the east just to give the controller enough time to tell us what we were doing before we entered into the blue dotted line that denotes their air traffic controlled zone. We've now definitely got permission to go in there. They know exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be turning over Milton Hall, exactly over where my mum and dad live so dad can see the house and my mum will be down in the garden waving frantically like a wild beast. <laughs> Sorry mum. <laughs> Poor old mum. So now we're turning back towards Milton Hall. In a few minutes time, you'll actually be able to see the aerodrome down there. As you can see, Dad's getting the phone out already, trying to ring Mum up. Absolutely pointless when you're up in a plane. He's never going to hear a word. Every so often, we have to do a special check that we remember with the Memnomic Frida. So that's fuel, radio, engine, direction and altitude, plus a little bit of carb heat as well in the engine just to keep the carburetor warm. I set a repeat 10 minute timer that just goes round and round and round on my stopwatch on my wrist to remind me to do it. Right, okay, fuel pump on, just going to switch tanks dad. Okay. Fuel pump off. Yeah, we're more or less out of Milton Hall now, to the west of Milton Hall. More or less coming towards the church. I can see Lyle Road down there now. One three heavy traffic, uh, 11 to 10 o'clock, 5 miles, the lights are going, 2,600 vehicles. From here, we got a great view of Milton Hall's airbase, used by the United States Air Force right now, and a real symbol between the link that the United States Air Force has with the people in this part of the world and in East Anglia. It's a real special place to be. Hey, Dad. Yep. Yeah. Lovely. See Lark Road? Yeah. Quite plainly. Quite one three heavy aircraft zone near 10 o'clock for three miles north down. See the football ground? <laughs> See your house? Good one for heavy, he's uh, 2,600 just cross. Yeah, yes, your cat, yeah. Uh, we'll I see mum's car in front of it. <laughs> We're allowed to go low, not for enough. No, we've got to stay at this level roughly, he said. Uh. So that was number two checked off the list, get Daddy O to see his house from above. And now we were departing towards Beres and Edmonds and it always gets to that point you think, how long can I stay on Lake and Heath's frequency and get a traffic service before they boot me off because they know that I'm leaving the area. But just listen to how these guys signed off. And if anyone is watching this in America, you should be 100% proud about how brilliantly your Air Force run the airspace for us. They don't have to let us in to their airspace. They don't have to give us a traffic service, but they always do. And they're always really, really polite, professional, and they make you feel so safe. And when you get sign-offs like what's going to happen in a minute, you just think, wow, those dudes are cool. Roger, do not have visual golf, have I'm happy to arrive and having that traffic, I have nothing else for you. Uh, register for turn over, squad 7000, frequency change approved. Squad 7000, frequency change approved. Good day, golf have a kilo. Have a great day. Isn't that nice, you hear that? Dad, he said have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> The flight continued as planned. We had a nice turn over Bury St. Edmunds. You get a beautiful view there of the old sugar refinery. And Bury St. Edmunds has just got a beautiful cathedral, a really, really nice city. When this mad pandemic's over, definitely recommend you check it out. Then as I got towards Newmarket, I started a descent down to about 2,000 feet and changed my radio over so we were back on Duxford's frequency. 
I didn't need to ask permission from Lake and Heath for that to happen because I was just listening to Lake and Heath's radio. And this is when we started to encounter a few problems. Right, Dad, we're going to talk to Duxford now. Okay. Duxford information, Golf Bravo Romeo had a kilo, currently 2,300 feet over New Market. Request rejoin information. Nothing. No reply. Didn't get a dicky bird back. A bit too far away for them to hear us yet. So coming in towards New Market, Dad. Yeah. You can't see it at the moment, but I'll make it so you can in well, a I sec. Can, yeah, I, can, I know put, where I am, mate. Got the heath and everything. Yeah, you see the old, oh yeah, look at that train down there as well. Yeah, long old train, isn't it? See, yeah. see it all right? Yeah, it's round about and everything, quite clearly. Alright, let me talk to Duxford again. Duxford information, Golf 5 Romeo, Paddy Kilo, 2,000 feet over New Market, request rejoin information. What's going on? Why can't I hear Duxford? 122.080. This is where you start to question yourself. You're like, what am I doing wrong? Am I, is there something that I've missed? And you also start thinking transponder, squawk 7600 for radio failure. But there's still another thing we can do. Substance information, Golf Bravo Radio Papa Kilo, 2000 feet over Newmarket, request rejoin information. You can't get that information at Duxford without talking to us, can you? No. Well, you can, but, you know, it's an emergency. But 122 just 080, it's there. In the right side channel, yeah. Yeah, that side. 122.080. Let's try one last time. Ah. Duxford information, Golf Bravo Romeo Papa Kilo, coming up to the wind farm, 2,000 feet, request rejoin information. Alright, okay, we're going to have to talk to Cambridge. So I'm now going to move my radio over to Cambridge Tower's frequency with the idea to speak to their tower to see if they can actually call Duxford's tower on the telephone line to tell them that I'm approaching. Those bloody things now, aren't they? Really far. Temperature approach, Golf Bravo, Romeo, Patrick Hilo, uh, 2,000 feet over the wind farm, trying to get hold of Duxford on 122, that's all 080, no pick up. Sorry, space, call me second, your call sign. Golf Bravo, Romeo, Patrick Hilo. Golf Bravo, Romeo, Patrick Hilo, come on, I'll just give Duxford a call on the landline for you. Roger, I'm trying to call them on 122 080. Okay, so I'm not their frequency, but I'll give them a call. Roger. At this point, I enter my own mini holding pattern at the wind farm. What we'll do, we'll just orbit next to. So look, we're talking to Cambridge over there. Yeah. Doesn't look very far away, does it? No. Right. Off public in a big space for the deputy there and try giving them a call again now. Roger, frequency change to 122 decimal 080. Thanks for your help. Good day, Golf Papa Kilo. Thanks. for information, Golf Bravo Romeo Papa Kilo, 2,000 feet over Wadlow Wind Farm. Request rejoin information, over. Golf Bravo Romeo Papa Kilo, Dustin information, uh, any apologies in the report. Racing the four mile final for one way, team four, the wind is light and variable, CFE uh, 1018. QFE 101A report, 4 mile final for runway 24, Golf Papa Kilo. And apologies, just the way we're sitting in the tower at the moment, we have to change radios, so uh, we didn't have the volume turn up, I do apologise. I thought you'd gone for a cup of tea, <laughs> Golf Papa Kilo. Alright, okay, so we've got clearance to go in. Yeah. Right, so 4 mile final is just over there, so what we do, descending from that in there, fuel pump on. Right, we're gonna do our downwind checks now, Dad. So, right. brakes good, brakes. So, I start to do my downwind checks, that's what I call them, but they're really my pre-landing checks, getting everything sorted out, ready, get the aircraft in the right configuration to land. But this was not the end of our troubles on this flight. Another aircraft was approaching from Cambridge, 
They were asked to call at four mile final, just like we were. And they replied back to Duxford and said, call four mile final. So they'd heard that that's what they had to do. They also knew that we were around. So we were looking for each other. I couldn't see them. But unfortunately, they decided that they weren't going to call four mile final and ignore that. Traffic pattern cock ups like this are a dangerous situation and it starts to escalate. You'll notice that the other traffic has not called four mile final yet, so I'm assuming they're behind me. Going to get south to land, so engine back a bit. We're just going to pull up, slow us down a bit. It was at this point I noticed the Cessna in front and above us. Just there. Come on, slow down your fucking thing. There we go, and one stage flat. Go on, Charlie Bravo, uh, four mile final, I'm still not visible with the traffic. Go on, Charlie Bravo, rocket. Go on, Charlie Bravo, you're visual with Cessna 170, Johnny, behind you. Roger, visual with Cessna, just above us, uh, four mile final as well, go on, Papa Kido. Rocket, which one's going to be first, do you think? I think they're going to be first. Uh, we'll do one orbit uh, to the east, Golf Avakino. Golf Avakino, thank you very much indeed. Student Golf Charlie Bravo, and uh, uh, D4 left, hard runway. Land your discretion, set to in 3, 5, 0 left and 5. Stand of session, Student uh, Golf Charlie Bravo. Alright, we're going to get out of their way, Dad, for a little while. I'm probably coming across a bit more grumpy than I actually, you know, mean to feel. But those guys should probably have known where four mile final was. They obviously didn't. They actually called two mile final, so they called the wrong roundabout. Because we use ground features like roundabouts to define where those places are. They should have checked the AIPs or the plates for Duxford before they come to know where those points were. But regardless, we've kept it safe. We've maintained separation and I've made the choice to do a circuit and I think that's a really important part of being a, a pilot in command is to make the choice to take control of the situation often to make no decision is the worst decision of all the worst thing was as well is the Cessna then went and did a go around Golf Kilo, uh, just rejoining again at 4 mile final 1000 feet Golf Kilo, 2 4 left final and we're line your discretion in 3 4 0 left to final Roger, Golf have a kilo. Right, OK, let's do all that again, Dad. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll get over four mile final first and then we'll do our... It's definitely choppy at a thousand feet now, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Just keep an eye out there, please. Just, that's my blind spot, always. And that was pretty much it for the rest of the flight. Just going to skip forward a few minutes to when we're lined up on runway 24 on final so you can watch the landing. And there we go, down nice and safe after a nice pleasure flight with a few little technical glitches thrown in just to test me. All that was left to do was for us to taxi back to park, shut the plane down, and go off to the pub for a nice pint.
That was a good fight, that, wasn't it? Lovely, yeah. Thanks very much. I enjoyed that. Liam McBrunner just running his shit off the Magnetos. Um, yeah, Dad, I'll have to say, like, uh, I'll probably regret it if I didn't say it, but that's probably like, the best day of my life. <laughs> Taking you up flying. You know it the first yeah. time. But no, it's just something I'm proud to have yeah. done as your yeah, son. Yeah. Take a big achievement. Yeah, you know, it's something, yeah. that, something you can take with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, here we go. So there, throttle close, mixture, idle, lean, cut off. There we go. Tip. I hope you've enjoyed this video today, guys. I know that Times with James as a channel is really rather directionless, but you know, hit the subscribe button if you get a sec. There's always loads of stuff going on here. There's gonna be some more eBay adverts, some more vlogging, and hopefully soon some more history videos as well. So hit the subscribe button, guys, and I'll see you in next week's video. Thank you.